Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Ionisms where we talk about movies, pets, a little bit of geopolitics and of course our favorite cricket. Now bear in mind if you are tuning in for the first time, this is a slow burn. There are no instant graphics, razzmatazz, there is no fancy smanchy. This is like a slow burn. So for folks who have low attention spans, this might not be the podcast for you. So fair warning given to you right at the start. In today's episode, I am going to talk about the ongoing T20 Cricket World Cup in the United States and Caribbean. And so I have two or three segments to this conversation. So one, we'll talk about cricket in the United States. Then we'll talk about how India is playing in so far. And then the third segment will be about what's ahead, moving moving ahead. And of course, it's not strictly all those three. There'll be some tertiary points along the way. but uh, if, if you are the ones who likes a non-rhetorical, no mumbo jumbo kind of simple straight talk, then this could be the episode that you want to listen till the end. As always, if you like what you hear, do subscribe, share and share with those who care. Uh, so let's let's jump right in. Right? right at the start, we are introducing cricket not necessarily literally introducing, but presenting T20 cricket to mainstream United States consciousness. Okay. And in doing so, have we done a good job of it? Could there be something better? So let's see and try and understand this. So the first question that comes to your mind is, why would you want to have a marquee event on a dodgy pitch in a in a situation or condition where, you know, the best elements of the sport are not highlighted. So what do I mean by that? First up, you have to understand who is the target audience. The target audience right now, largely lapping up the T20 World Cup is, of course, the expat crowd, which is expected. People come from the subcontinent, some of in, in the EU region who are somewhat familiar with cricket, even, even in, in the EU. So you, other than Ireland, some part of Netherlands and, of course, England, if you suddenly go back and to say, uh, ask somebody in Belgium or uh, in Germany, they're probably uh, going to be a little puzzled. Of course, not the expat crowd there or the immigrant crowd there. Now, given the fact that America is the land of immigrants, as it were, there are all sets of people. So there are Latinos, there are African American, of course, the Caucasian crowd, the regular Caucasian, second generation, third generation Caucasian crowd, or even more. And they come from Italian descent, they come from Irish descent and Australian and, and German and all those things. So this is the target audience that you have. Given this target audience who's largely focused on what? Either they're on baseball or they're on um, uh, NFL or of course you have Super Bowl and you know some of the other athletics. Uh, so it is a sporting nation. And so majority of them understand those kind of games. Cricket is something that they have zero idea. Of course, we all know historically in 1845 or whatever, 1875, cricket was being played before the advent of baseball. But the fact is that is a far, so far behind that there is no relevance of that in modern day context. So you have to go to restart and repackage, represent. So you can't suddenly, sh if you show Oh, there's a Cricket World Cup happening in your neighborhood and they're going to go, huh? Like, whatever and why is that? So what it did require is a preceding marketing activity for almost like a year in advance. I know it costs money, but here's what needed to be done. You could break down Cricket into three parts for the beginner, for the intermediary and for the advanced. For the beginner, simplify the laws of Cricket. It's a game between a bat and a ball. And 11 players uh, take turns uh, to bat and, uh, and and the opposition team needs to get them out. So they understand that bit. So explain that, market that, relate that. How do you relate that? You pick a, one of the marquee games between, say, the Red Sox and Yankees and say, you know, if that's the thrill that you got, multiply the, the same thrill into 2x or 3x. And with Why? Because there is this additional complexity that comes in moisture, texture, soil, the swing, the seam, the size of the bat, the dimensions, there's so many other factors other than the simple laws of the sport. 
And so th that's what people would, it would get the average American little more curious, the, the non-recent expat community excluded because they get, they have some reference to context. So who, who within that set, who are you trying to address? You're trying to address those who are active sport lovers and not just those who land up for marquee encounters like the finals or whatever like i'll go to the super bowl final but what about the rest of the matches right like we have many who turn up for an india england uh, or an india australia match or traditionally india pakistan match oh i watch india i watch cricket i love cricket but beyond the india pakistan match and or england australia match and you ask them so did you follow New Zealand and South Africa? And they go, no, I don't watch all those matches. So, like, so you're not talking about that audience. You're talking about those audiences who understand the nuances of their sport, the, the sport that they love. And then pick that thread and see if you can do some relatability to cricket and show. Because they, they still think it's a, uh, it, it's a sport on Valium, which is, um, you know, a sleeping pill, which, you know, they think that test cricket, which lasts over five days, they have very little understanding of T20 cricket, which is a little more fast-paced. And of course, it need not be that long-drawn affair of five hours. You can further compress it to three hours and present it as a product which gets over in three, three and a half hours and gives you the probability of a, a close finish much higher and the thrills and the excitements and the oohs and the ahs. That will get some audience. To do that, you needed a pitch which was may not be a pata wicket as we call it or like a flat track but somewhat of track where there is even bounce and and then which you see 170 to 200 scores uh, chase down not so easily but close uh, encounters as far as possible you can't engineer it beyond a point but give that the opportunity because people love seeing the boundaries right so that would have got the you know if you even if you're a person think of this right folks who were watching probably cricket for the first time and landed up at the India-Pakistan game at Melbourne. Remember that classic game? Even if they were watching it for the first time, the excitement would have caught on. Like, wow, what is this going on? So I think they missed a trick there by hosting a drop and pitch from Adelaide, which had not settled in the soil. If you know that the pitch, it's, it's, it's just like a cold set on which is on a largely sand base. It does take time for it to go through the weathering process of few, uh, few showers and sunshines and clouds and moisture in the air and it absorbs. It gives a texture flavor to the wicket over a period of time. So if I were the administrator, I don't know how logistically possible would that would be, but probably get the drop-in pitch six or eight months in advance and block the square off. You know, you pay money, rental, whatever if required, but call down the area off and say, let the pitch settle down and integrate with the soil below. Chances are that the spongy bounce and uneven, unplayable deliveries would go away and you would have a better scoring match and therefore a better engaging atmosphere and so on and so forth. It needed to be marketed well, so it needed to be organized well and it needed to be made more relatable than what they have done in so far yes of course you could put a giant banner on times square but the expats will sit and watch what about like i said the rest of the crowd and so very important to uh i mean the organization should have thought about that and if they haven't i don't know why they haven't but moving on so what has happened uh, as a result of all this is that we have seen low scoring matches you can call them thrillers, but they were actually dodgy pitches where batsmen were even more dodgier or the players were even more dodgier. Bowlers were probably happy saying that, you know, I get an uneven bounce and so the probability for me to get a wicket is higher. So they, they would probably feel a little more happier, but not so much. I, I don't think we saw top class cricket. Let's put it this way. We didn't see top class batting. We saw some shades of good bowling but that's about it and and so that's not something to leave a huge impact yes you probably made merchandise money and i think there was some news on cbs which said you know you would do 100 million dollars or whatever 
from that India Pakistan game or the economies at scale that occur, which is fine, but still it's this one off blip. It's not a sustainable thing over a period of time. So, some things to think about. Moving on to the matches, if you think that, uh, I'll just talk about the Pakistan India match and, of course, Pakistan USA and India USA matches, those three. I did watch the Pakistan Canada match as well. And so my general sense is that, that between the two teams who played less worse won the match. It's not that they played excellent cricket who played better cricket. I mean, you can say, yeah, conversely, uh, that is true, but I didn't see spectacular play. It's like who played less worse. So, for example, if you look at Indian batting, uh, started with, uh, say, look at the India-Pakistan match, Mr. Virat Kohli is repeatedly, arguably one of the best cricketers in, in his generation, but repeatedly gets out uh, fishing outside the off stump, especially when you know that the Trick is uh, the pitch is tricky, unpredictable. Why would you want to be so expansive with intent when you know it's not going to be a 170 pitch? It is going to be a 130, 140 pitch, perhaps 150 if you're if you really played well. We as outsiders, you know, we understand that nuance, and US players who do it for a living for years should have better match awareness. There's this tricky balance between playing natural cricket, showing intent, expressing yourself, and being game aware and being match aware. Why are you people not being match aware? I'm just not talking about Mr. Virat Kohli, even with uh, Mr. Shama as well. And of course, uh, one of my favorites, Mr. Pant, who just plays reckless abandon with reckless abandon. He just desperately tries to get out. And if he doesn't get out, then he scores. That cannot be a strategy as much as I love the gentleman or the, you know, the character that he is. And he's come off a terrible, tragic uh, incident in his life. In many cases, a life-changing. But his batting is has not changed. And some might say, well, let him be the way he is. But I, like I said a few minutes earlier, you have to balance your natural instinct with game awareness. And that, I'm, I'm afraid, is lacking with Mr. Punt. So in the amount of times he's shown us brilliant cricket has been overshadowed in my limited view with reckless shots where he could have easily you know gone on to greatness much earlier than what he has achieved right now in the sense there were opportunities the match was in under control and he kind of threw his wicket away that kind of situations have happened a bit more often than not and i suspect it will continue and that worries me right i mean it's not the example you want to set like when mr virat kohli was going through a bad phase uh, a, a slump in form. He was so far committed outside the sixth stump, seventh stump. It was almost a joke between the bowlers that all you need to do is bowl four balls outside the fifth or the sixth stump and the seventh time he will nick it. It cannot be, right? You have to outthink the bowler. Right? Part of the modern day game, I guess it always was, but even more so now is to outsmart, outthink the bowler because talent is hit the ceiling, right? Everybody's talented. That's why you're playing at the level that you are playing. But other than that, you need to be in that mindset where you are out skilling the opposition. And that street smarts is required for all the players. And I don't know how to engineer it, how to educate it other than, I mean, you have to show some examples from previous matches and say, here, why did you not use game awareness? Like Mr. Sharma gets out at 45, a square leg. He will counter argue and say, the amount of times I go over and get a six is much higher than getting caught. Yeah, they can put 10 fielders. I'll keep tonking them over the fielder. The point only being, yes, back your instinct, ability, talent, but also back the situation that is happening. That is a tricky balance to maintain and you will lose more matches if you fail to read the match situation. So in this instance where India could have scored upwards of 130, 140, we landed up scoring much, much less. So in terms of bowling, yes, you arguably you have the best bowler in the world. 
बट यू रिफ्यूज टू बोल इन फर्स्ट ओवर साइकोलॉजिकल फ्रीज और ब्रेन फ्रीज इज प्रॉब्ली द हाइएस्ट वेन यू आर स्टार्टिंग ऑफ एज अ बैटर राइट दैट्स दैट्स वेन इफ यू थिंक ऑफ द डिस्पेशल मिस्टर रोहित शर्मा इज हैड अगेंस्ट स्टार्क अगेंस्ट मिस्टर अफरीदी शाइन शाह अफरीदी इट्स नॉट बिकॉज यू इज एनी लेस टैलेंट और यू कैन फिगर दैट इन कमिंग यू नो लेफ्ट हैंड yorker of course he knows that it's predictable bowling the thing is can you put your mind over matter and you know change your stance change your grip do something else uh, and get get past the first second third over and given a opposition like pakistan australia might be different given opposition like pakistan they would they're mercur- mercurial right so they're the most charged up in the first three overs but if you deny them that euphoria and joy then you are set for the balance 17 overs you know what i'm saying psychologically unless you do some harakiri and and something happens so these are the game nuances which i thought there is enough people in in the think tank to to highlight them to the team and i and i do not know why this is not been done as often as one would like to see and so my my thing is uh, for the bowling you would want to start with mr bumrah at all times and then probably yeah, you want to still bowl the 19th that's what it is it's never going to be this in flow you know 1 3 4 1 3 5 kind of a sequence where the bowler is in a flow but that's the nature of t- modern t20 cricket there'll be broken spells and so bit worried about how india is going to shape up if i were to say moving forward will india team india reach the semi finals that looks likely but from semi finals to finals is what we all are expecting as fans right the fan is that you at least got to get to that level till the finals and then now it's high time that you get past the finals in the sense you win the finals which at this point seems little unlikely like i'm Uh, i'm hoping that i'm i'm wrong but i have not seen discipline cricket when i said discipline cricket i mean curbing your national uh, national natural instinct and playing to the situation and balancing that out and showing intent when required and showing restraint this balance between intent and restraint is what will take india past the final and make them win the trophy and if they can't i'm afraid we are going to again land up i think it's what 24th of june the final where we will not have a uh, india holding the cup the next best possibility is of course australia england and south africa not to ignore the other teams but the probability why because let me just pick south africa as a outlier or wild card if you will for the reason being there have been three games including the one that happened today or yesterday where they won by one run against nepal so forget the opposition forget whatever they have broken the jinx of losing crunch moments that could be and mark my words that could be a turning point psychologically for the cricketing nation of south africa where there was never a doubt on the talent never a doubt on the intent or anything it's when the crunch moment came the kind of you know the muscles contracted probably having gone through it three times in a short span of two weeks this could be a turning point for them i suspect and if it is then south africa will not be dismissed as or oh, their chokers they'll anyways not go past quarters i'd be very uh, interested to see how in big marquee knockout matches they go past the crunch situations which is also very now similar to india that in marquee encounters are we now choking more often than not and so you can't just dismiss it off as a one off yeah, it happened once it has happened a bit consistently that leaves us with the other two teams with australia and england so they have traditionally you know because they are i would say australians are a little more detached about cricket if they win the world cup there are three people at the airport to receive them if they lose the world cup there are three people at the airport to receive them so <laughs> maybe that's the trick you know and here the people you know billion people uh, cry and you know smile and you know wail and all those things happen none of that shit happens 
in in Australia, and so maybe that's the reason why they do they play the way they do because they say, yeah, if we lose, we lose. It's uh, I don't know. I think it's a bit uh, rich to you know push your luck beyond a point. I suspect Australia will reach a point where you know what many a times, especially think of the Dubai. Um, uh, situation or the recent ODI World Cup, they were not necessarily the best team to get up there. You know, they played good cricket, no doubt, but not necessarily the best team. And I don't say that as an Indian who lost in the final, but purely from cricketing sense, right? And then one, so because the opposition played far worse, it seemed that you played far better. So, and you can argue from an Australian point of view, that we make the opposition play worse because and, and that's how we elevate ourselves that's a story for another day but uh, that, that's the net of the story so my sense is there will come a time where either they'll raise the, their level of game against all odds which has not yet been the case mostly the, I, the opposition has psychologically tumbled or probably misread the pitch whatever be the case but they have managed to you know thump or you know some of the better teams and they have a cricketing grand slam as a motivation like if they win this they have they hold all the three trophies which is fantastic um you, arguably this will be the generational team of the era I and mean, it might not seem like that given the demeanor of uh pat calm comments uh but uh but hey you have to give it to them it is what it is that leaves us with England. Team England has been at the receiving end of baseball criticism. I think not, not even that they were wanted it, but it kind of went completely off the charts, you know, when it started and with the aggressive intent and caught some of the teams by surprise. But eventually you get found out. Eventually the bowlers figure out. Eventually the psychological aspects kick in. Eventually the conditions play in. Eventually the game awareness creeps in. Like, what were you thinking? That kind of stuff. And then the commentary that comes along with by some of their players did not help the cause at all. And so my sense is uh, Team England would have now, in a situation if they again lose this, there will be whole scale changes in their setup. But uh, they have all all the boxes checked in terms of intent, aggression, the bowling, fielding, everything is there. So you, you kind of like what stops you from, you know, getting over. So I wouldn't be surprised and I'm going to probably stick my neck out here to it to be um, England, South Africa final, which is, I know, cricketing statistics and logics and pundits will say they're the least likely. But somewhere it's this nagging feeling. I won't necessarily put it as a gut feel, but it's a nagging feeling that it is looks like that's how because other teams have given enough reasons why they might not progress to that final hurdle. And not that these guys have, but because of the reasons mentioned psychologically, mentally, I do think South Africa will get the right side of the green. They've been the wrong side of the green for many, many times. Uh, the rub of the green is on the cards for uh, Team South Africa is is what I would think. But yeah, can't dis discount or dismiss anybody uh, else, uh, in including Team India or Australia to say, hey, uh, we will you know, walk the talk and show it. So th that, I, I think, is the state of the union right now, state of cricket. Um, it spoke a little bit about how introducing cricket to United States probably missed a trick a little bit, how the matches have been. A small uh, retrospective thought on how Team USA played. Yes, they played well, but I, I thought, uh, you know, come on, uh, we will see them struggle moving forward in much uh, little different wickets, helpful conditions. They made the most of it and credit to them, no, no two ways about it. And make sure that it, it seems. People don't get the fact that some of the players have played proper cricket elsewhere. So not to get fooled that, oh, it's USA, it's an associate nation. So yeah, they're an associate nation, but they have in their previous lives played proper cricket. There's Corey Anderson there who's played for New Zealand. 
and as has Netra Valkar played for under-19 India and so on and so forth. So it's not that like, like a walkover kind of team, unlike say uh, Uganda or uh, Oman, which probably will have some, in fact, I, I was quite impressed with Papua New Guinea, the gumption, the fight that they showed with the limited exposure that they get. So absolutely, we should have more associate nations develop and grow into cricket. But uh, I, I think that Team USA might still pull off one more surprise somewhere along the way before exiting. I don't see them going all the way, but maybe there's one more surprise there. Uh, and, and so finally, uh, hopefully the next, uh, by the time the next uh, uh, Champions Trophy comes along, which is the next marquee event, I know the already conversations in, in Pakistan, will India come, will India not come? The net of the story is we will not know as late or we will know about it as late as one month before or maybe less than a month before the actual event happens which seems unlikely but you never know how things change between india and pakistan right to pakistani fans i know it is disappointing it is terrible to see your team perform the way they did it is also to do with you know you got the rub of the green kudat kanizam q uh, kn worked for you in australia you know, when uh, you got to, you know, some, I listened to some of the anchors, you know, we made it to the finals. Yeah, but how? How did you make to the to the finals, right? And something to think about. But given the fact that you still made to the finals, net, net, that was because you got the rub of the green this time because the match between USA and Ireland drained out. You did not get the rub of the green. So it evens out eventually. But I think the bigger trouble is getting the team sentiment in place, I thought Mr. Babar Azam it was evolving as a captain and he needed time. So sacking him after the World Cup was a bad idea. He accepting the captaincy in a space of one month after being sacked so un unceremoniously was a further worse idea. Doesn't reflect well on his headspace and mind space. I don't know how it does for the team uh, at the park or in the dressing room. Lots of questions uh, for Team Pakistan. As always, you know, somewhere the cliche goes with them. They're mercurial. They, they seem down and out. And then suddenly they will spring up. But how long will you have this mercurial cricket? Isn't it a reflection of poor administration and system? Right? Is that something to feel proud about? That, oh my God, my team didn't do well. But I know one day they will just beat Australia or beat India uh, by 10 wickets. Yeah, it has happened. So that you can't live in such exception exceptional hope uh, that will happen right it's in t20 cricket that is a probability so i won't get too overwhelmed by that kind of victory or you know but hey who am i to, i'm not whatever floats your boat so i'd imagine the way forward for pakistan cricket would be to reset and restart you've got guru gary who will be thinking oh my god what did i sign up for but he should be able to do a good job and we will see his tenure will be till my senses till uh, the next champions trophy unless something happens even before that you never know but if that is the case then i'm sure there will be some cricketing sense logic provided the players agree to it it's not that they weren't like i, I wouldn't doubt mr mickey arthur trying to give the same sense or uh, i think what jeff lawson was it uh, the, before and uh, and plethora of foreign coaches um, who have probably tried to give that. And if it has not yet landed, then it's probably not meant to be. So something to think about. And if they continue to be mercurial, then that's what it is, right? So we can't argue or say anything about it. That's all the time that I had for this episode of Ionisms. If you like this kind of a simple, straight talk, non-rhetorical, non uh no jingo, no jingos, no jingoism, no big, just a plain heart to heart chat, slow burn. I know there's no rapid thing. Do share with people who care, who appreciate similar content, similar style of presentation. All the stuff that I mentioned here, take it with a grain of salt. It's like a work in progress. It's like nothing is etched in stone. I'm very happy to agree to disagree in the sense, if you think you found something that I missed out, I'm happy to change. I'm happy to accept that. Oh, I missed that point. Maybe I'll correct it in the next episode. And if you did like this style, then do 
leave a like share and subscribe and that and consider doing that uh, if, if you think it's good enough so until we meet the next time stay well stay safe and keep watching ionisms ciao